that's how I used to know video. Uh, oh wow, <laughs> that's cut and paste. That is. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna back that up. All right, it's just get... that I can never do the outro right, so I was going to read that verbatim. <laughs> it, it backfired on you. It did. Welcome to I Used to Know. I'm Scott, and I'm Steve. We are your hosts for this adventure into the past, where we dive into things we used to know when we were kids that are no, no longer true. true. Hey, Steve. Hey, Scott. Hey, guess what? What? My voice is back. Hey. Uh, yeah, I'm time, all back. Time to celebrate. Yeah. And I also think it's time to think back. Yes, I love doing that. All the way to when we were getting ready to go to school. Oh, back in the day. Yes. And it's time for breakfast. What did you eat? Oh, well, of course. I mean, everybody knows the most important part of the balanced, nutritious breakfast is going to be a cereal fortified with 10 vitamins and minerals, Scott. Yes. Like a little sign on there, right? Yeah. All right. So why do you, why do you ask? Well, but what kind of cereal? I mean, did you have like Raisin Bran? Oh, come on. Raisin Bran? Honestly? Are you kidding me? No. Come on. No self-respecting kid is going to be eating Raisin Bran, two scoops of raisins. <laughs> I had legit Kid tested, mother approved cereals. Nice. Right? I had uh, I had fun to eat, appley sweet cereals. Scott, I had magically delicious cereals, and those were the best. They, they were exactly the best cereals. Were the kind you would find on a Saturday morning cartoon commercial, mm. with like some great cartoon character telling you how fantastic it would be to <laughs> taste it and eat it. And of course, like you said, it was always part of a well balanced breakfast. Ooh. Of course, of course. Yes. <laughs> As the commercials would always point out over and over again with that last scene where they have got the toast and the orange juice and the milk and everything. And you got to you gotta listen to an animated character. I mean, they know what they're talking they, about. They do. They do. And man, nothing beat those yummy sugary cereals. Uh, I'm getting hungry just thinking about this right now. Uh, cereal was probably... Back in the day, at least half of what I ate, right? <laughs> I mean, every morning I had it as my meal, and then throughout the day I'm snacking on cereal. As a kid, it's the perfect kid food, right? It's like it's like a bowl of candy that you pour milk on top of, and then when you eat it, your parents say, "Good job." <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, and then and then you know I'm, I'm a young parent. First the first food I give to my baby in the high chair, other than the rice cereal, other than the rice cereal. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm Cheerios, of yep. course. I'm putting I'm Cheerios for my baby. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, you, and you got to break those Cheerios in half, right? When they're little babies, oh, right? Yeah. Safety first. <laughs> you don't them to choke. No, no. And of course, uh, the Bentley of all cereals Bentley. in my mind. Yes, the Fun Pack, where you had the you know the cereal where you get like the little <sighs> ten, eight or ten little mini boxes. You get the choice. You, you get the choice. Yeah, you know, and it's all about the different kinds. You know, you, if you don't feel like Fruit Loops today, then go with the Pops. <sighs> The variety pack. Oh, my God. Yeah, exactly. That was the absolute best. Whenever I would go visit my grandparents, you know, for an overnight, that's what was waiting for me. My grandparents would always pick that variety pack of cereal. And let me tell you, quick aside, do you remember at um, Boy Scout camp? Yes. That was like part of what we would have in, yep. the, in, in, the, in the cafeteria. It was one of the few things that were good. You go to the mess hall <laughs> and there was, there, there was a box of cereal. And I learned to use my knife, and you cut like the box, oh, like an I beam on it. You make like a little H cut. Yep. You open everything up, and now you got a little bowl. Do you know some of those boxes actually have perforations on it they, now to show you can do that? Exactly. And we we invented that. We back we, in the eighties. We did. Yeah. So little, little quick aside. No, absolutely. So so and in fact, I guess that's what we should be talking about today. Yeah. I think we should uh, talk about, and I used to know sugary breakfast cereals. Mm, yes. So let's grab our Wayback Machine and go back to where it all started. Oh, yeah. And I did my research on this one, Scott. Really? Oh, yeah. We're going back to 1863. 1863. Mm-hmm. And we're going to witness the invention of the first cold breakfast cereal. It's called Granula. Granula? Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Uh, all right. That's in 1863? 1863. Let's go with the Wayback Machine. Um... Only 1863. Are you kidding me? No. Stop doing this. But we, I, we have to go back further. I mean, we just we just have to. <sighs> okay, fine. Where are we going? We, we have to go to the age of invention and physics and enlightenment. Really? Okay, so we're going back to the, what, the, the Renaissance. No, of course not. That's crazy. Going all the way back to the Renaissance? Yeah. No. The Romans. <laughs> of course 
course. The Romans. We haven't had the Romans in a while. Mm. Let's just do the Romans, Scott. Go but, ahead. But it makes total sense because the Romans, without them, there would be no cereal. It was the Romans. So you think, you think the Romans invented cereal? Invented it. <laughs> Not only did they invent it, but they named it. <laughs> really? Okay. Yes. And, in fact, it was given to them by the gods. Cereal from heaven. Is that what you're saying? From the gods. Sort of. See, in ancient Rome times, they had a goddess of agriculture, grain, crops, and fertility. Mm -hmm. Her name was Circes. Circes. Yes. She was one of the few benevolent gods in the Roman times, right? And one of the few that would help humans all the time. So she was very well liked. Okay. Right? So when it was time for giving her a festival, mm -hmm. well, the Romans were always happy to do so. Yeah, she's so nice. Yeah, exactly. She was one of the few that helped. She wasn't like, you know, torturing humans. <laughs> so her festival would be held eh, around April 12th through the 19th, somewhere around there, according to our modern calendar. And remember, she was the goddess of grains. Okay. Her name is Circes. She's the goddess of grains. Right. So her festival was called the Cerelia. Or the game of Circe's. Okay. And that's how the name cereal came to describe a grain and grain product mm. because of her festival, Cerelia. Yep. By the way, the Romans were, all, were big on growing grains and the common folk like us, right? Yep. Uh, you'd find us eating like gruel type soup of mush made with grains, <laughs> but not really for breakfast. So, <sighs> so there's your first bowl of cereal, mm. the Romans... And named after the big festival for Circe's, right. Cerulea. At first, I thought it was going to be a stretch, right? That you were going to go all the way back to the Romans. You're going to come up with some kind of harebrained thing that connected cereal with the Romans. I came up with the name. But now you've got... Name. And the way <laughs> it's laid out, it makes sense. Cereal Cerealia. Cerealia. Cerealia was the game of Circe's. All right. Yeah. I... And that named all grains cereal i i accept that introduction to the word cereal great all right now can i please or should i say great oh man oh, that's so bad that's so bad and i could see your eyes light up right before you did it and i knew something was coming okay so now can i please at this point in the podcast Take this Wayback Machine to 1863 like I wanted to. Absolutely. It's all yours. Beginning. Here's the keys. Thank you very much. I don't know why I always have to be the second driver of the Wayback Machine. <laughs> you just have to go further back. <laughs> Shotgun. <laughs> all right. All right. So it's 1863. Mm -hmm. Right. Abraham Lincoln is president. Nice. Right. Tall hats are in. Good. <laughs> but America is in a civil war. Yeah. Yeah. The Battle of Gettysburg is about to take 51,000 lives. And then up in upstate New York, there's a religious vegetarian by the name of James Caleb Jackson, and he creates this clump of dried graham flour, and he calls that granula. Granula. Yeah. Because it can be eaten for breakfast as long as he soaks it in milk, but you got to soak it in milk overnight. All I got to say is any food breakfast that starts with the word clump, you have to say, it has got a little issue there. <laughs> Mother, may I have another clump? clump. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But as you can imagine, it wasn't a huge success. It wasn't big because yeah, it's a clump of dried meal stuff. <laughs> stuff that you have to soak in milk to make it edible. edible. Right. All right. So there's, there's a lot of precursors. There are a lot of... Small little... A lot uh, of gates you got to get through. Small little <laughs> riders. Yeah, strings attached to this thing. So you've been talking about granula, not granola. You mean... Right. Right? Not granola. Because granola, that stuff... People loved granola. Oh, talking about granola. Funny story. Right? Some surgeon from Michigan took James Jackson's idea about this um, rock-hard granula mm -hmm. and made a less rock-hard version of it. And he started selling it all over the all over the place under this name granola. And you know what? That doctor's name from Michigan, his name was John Kellogg. Yep. And funnier story still, a patient of Kellogg's took that same idea and made tiny pellets of this granola stuff and started selling that under the name Grape Nuts. <laughs> and that guy's name, his last name was Post. 
Kellogg's and Post. That's you into cereal people. That is. That is. As in Post cereal. <laughs> but, all right. So, Kellogg and Post, but granola, grape nuts. Mm-hmm. Cereal is, seriously, why are we even talking about granola and grape nuts? And cereal. Yeah, but, but I don't think, no, 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 no. I don't think I've ever had a bowl of grape nuts. <laughs> there are no marshmallows in grape nuts. <laughs> That's right. This is not the cereal I want to talk about. <laughs> okay, all right. So, so we're getting to the good stuff. But okay. first, we've got to see the evolution of the cereal into what will one day be this glorious bowl of little cereal replicas of chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> hmm? All right, all right, fair enough. Well, I know that in the 1900s that John Kellogg, his little brother, made cornflakes by accident. No, accident. Yes. He left a batch of cooked corn and wheat sitting out one day, and when he returned, he discovered that it's gone completely stale. Oh, sounds good. Shocker, right? Let's, <laughs> and let's eat that. Yummy. Yep. So after some more experimentation, cornflakes were born, and he added a little bit of sugar to it, and he started selling it by the box. Mm-hmm. Mm. And then to help boost sales, Keith Kellogg started to include prizes in the box. Genius. Yes, the first prize ever to come with a box of Kellogg's Corn Flakes was an animated little flip book. Uh, I think it was called the Funny Jungle Land Moving Picture Book. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And, and I guess that promotion worked really well, right? Okay. Because I tell you what, Kellogg's ran with that promotion for 23 years. Either that worked really well or really badly. <laughs> I can't tell which. <laughs> just, just imagine this, right? You're, you're a nine-year-old in 1909, mm-hmm. and you get the funny Jungle Land book in a box of cereal, right? Yep. Then you grow up. Maybe you join the service. Maybe you fight in World War I. Maybe you get home and you get married. And then when you're 32 years old, in the middle of the Great Depression, you open another box of cornflakes same jungle land picture book. <laughs> wow. That's got to be a boring breakfast. Well, all I got to say is the prize seems to match the excitement of the cereal. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, cornflakes. <laughs> but, you know, and it's interesting. You mentioned World War One. That's right. Yeah, because right around that time, the Quaker Oats Company comes up with a way to explode rice grains under pressure. Like kind of like popcorn. Hey, it's a fun cereal. Yeah, and they start to sell that stuff under the name puffed rice, with the catchy marketing marketing slogan, "The first food shot from guns." <laughs> really? Yeah, from, shot from guns. Yeah, yeah. To to kind of you know carry on the whole war thing. Uh, it makes sense, right? It's marketing. It is. Hey, yeah, everybody's thinking about the war. Shot from guns. It's, it's where your food, your cereals come from. We talked about what the candy, the Halloween candy. Yep. You had the bazooka, bazooka bubble gum. Yep. Yeah, it all makes yep. sense. So you're shooting rice out of guns to turn it into puffed rice. <laughs> hey, I'll eat that. Mm-hmm. Yes. But, you know, puffed rice, I'm not trying to diss. I guess I am dissing puffed rice. A it's, little bit. It's a little. Sounds like it. A little bit. A little dry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So let's get to the good stuff. Oh, yes. Right? Let's do it. Sugar. And as many of our shows point out, the turning point is right after World War II, right? It's now the 1950s. The Second World War is over. And the baby boom causes a spike in the sales of cereal. Makes sense. Yep. There are way more kids eating cereal. Mm-hmm. And way more advertising. For the kids. Yeah. So how do you convince kids to ask their parents for for cereal, right? Mm-hmm. Well, kids like sugar. Sure, they do. I mean, they really like sugar. <laughs> so Kellogg's takes on cornflakes, puts a thick sugar glaze on the flakes, and creates a bunch of kid-friendly ca- uh, cartoon animals like Tony, Tony the, the Tiger. Tiger. Tony the Tiger, yes. yeah. And Katie the Kangaroo. What? No, there's no Katie the Kangaroo. Katie there's the Tony, Kangaroo. Tony the Tiger. And Elmo the Elephant. No. <laughs> really? There, there, are, there are more than one mascot? There are. are. Really? Yep, yep. And then they get some advertising time on this newfangled television thing when it starts getting out there. And boom, Frosted Flakes is born, flying off the shelves by the time. It was great. <laughs> you used that twice. Twice. <laughs> twice. <laughs> and then from that point, it's off to the races, man, right? All right you got the, every, the goal of every cereal company now is out there to grab the attention of America's kids. That's where the money is. And they did it all by making up these crazy cartoon mascots to pitch all their increasingly sweet cereals, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you got in the 1960s, Captain Crunch. 
Sure it's foggy, Captain Crunch. Can we make it back to the ship? Certainly, Dave. Listen. That's the sound of somebody eating my Captain Crunch cereal. I just rode toward it. You know, funny thing about Captain Crunch? Yeah. He's not a captain. He's he's not a captain. No, take a look at the number of bars on his thing. He's a commander. He's a, but it says Captain Crunch on the... I know. Oh. There's a mistake. <laughs> well, okay. He's commander. I, I hope he knows. <laughs> All right. All right. But then, uh, in, like in the cartoons, it's the 70s when things really started to ramp up, right? So you've got fruit-flavored cereals like Trix. Fruit-flavored Trix! The right disguise will get me some. Go on. It's the rabbit! Silly rabbit, oh. for kids. Mm-hmm. Monster theme cereals like Booberry, Ooh. Count Chocula, TV show theme cereals like Fruity Pebbles, Cocoa Pebbles, all the stuff that's coming at the kids in the 70s. It's all turning into cereals. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it's also the 70s where this little thing called the government starts to get involved. You know, getting in the way. Yeah, they started, uh, they had their group, this crazy group called the Federal Trade Commission. They, they were not so happy. They started to take note on how the cereal industry was targeting their marketing specifically at kids. Okay, well, I guess uh, they've got a point there. And uh, people really started to notice all the sugar. Right? <laughs> how could they not? Wait a minute. <laughs> all this food is not healthy for my child. And so by the end of the first half of the 80s, cereals would no longer have the word sugar in their name. You know? Yeah, I remember when that happened. Yeah, they had to kind of like disguise the fact that they still had sugar. Right? <laughs> yeah. And think of those examples. You used to remember super sugar crisps? Mm-hmm. They're, they're sugar sh- crisps, but they're, 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 they're super sugar. Yeah. It's like yeah. super no, sugar. No, I totally remember those. And they were good too. Yeah. Well, they, they turned into super golden crisps. No yeah. sugar. Right? No, no, it's not, they're now they're just golden. Still puffed rice by any other name. Sorry. Sugar corn pops mm-hmm. turn just into corn pops. No. Yep. And sugar smacks, of course, they, they turn into honey smacks. Right? But honestly, the sugar's still in there. It didn't go away. No, no, it did not. Business Insider did a review in 2017 of the popular cereals and found that the average popular cereal has 19.8 grams of sugar per serving where the health organization suggests that a, quote, healthy cereal mm-hmm. should have no more than 10 grams of sugar per serving. Yeah. So that's nearly double. Oh, man. I know. And then the secret sugary ones are the ones with, like, dried fruits in them because they really lift the sugar content up because mm-hmm. the dried fruit has a lot of sugar content. <laughs> it's all hidden. Man. Yeah, exactly. And if you're running into your closet right now to go look at the nutritional value, remember to look at the serving size because this is a little trick they do. The more sugary the cereal, the smaller the serving size to make the calories and the sugar content appear smaller. That is so tricky. Yeah. So they'll, they'll have things like two thirds of a cup serving where like Cheerios would be like one cup. Yeah. Right. So just yeah. do the and, math. Oh, it's the same calories. It's the same sugar. It's all, right. all the same. <laughs> but we're not trying to be the sugar police here. Right, no, Scott? we are not. All right. Because we, we grew up on these sugar bomb cereals where it was just kind of like injecting sugar into our bodies. And oh, we yeah. loved them. Oh, gosh. Yeah. You are so right. Yeah. So, okay. I right. I, I, I guess it's clear that I wasn't a granola type guy myself, right? But I can I, let me share a couple of my favorite cereals with y'all. Sure. All right. First one. I don't know if you if you have even heard of this one. It is Kaboom. Yeah. Wasn't that General a clown? Clowns? There was. There was a clown on the box. Yep. It had these marshmallow circus shapes, and the and it was just it was just like it was like a circus in your bowl in the morning. It was a great way to start. Kaboom. Loved Kaboom. Next one. Everybody loves this. Booberry. I agree. Ah, Booberry from General Mills. The marshmallows are ghosts. And when you're done, there's milk left over and it's this grayish blue. <laughs> yeah, I know what you milk. mean. It's like, it's like, I don't know. If it's to... 1%, it's more gray. If it's whole milk, it was like really blue. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know and this thing. You can, you can drink it or yep. you can paint with it. It doesn't, it's, it's amazing. It's what so this good stuff though. Is. Uh, it's like quick built into it, the thing. Yes. Yeah, no, so absolutely. Great. Yeah, blueberry. I love it. Um, the next one is one of my favorites, Cookie Crisp. All right, this is another General Mills cereal. Well, I guess I, I guess I'm like officially a fanboy of General Mills. My top three are all General Mills. This cereal looked like a bowl full of chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> come on, <laughs> come on. You can't get any better than that. No, all right, uh, there's no way. I mean, I'm... the chips were really, really small. <laughs> They're like little, little dots. Ink, ink dots in this little cereal. Yeah, there were periods from dot matrix printers. <laughs> but hey, 
It got me to the table. It did. It got me to finish my cereal. You my, had your breakfast I, before I you went to school. Ten essential part, vitamins and minerals. It's part of your healthy breakfast. <laughs> my healthy, my healthy, balanced breakfast. Balanced breakfast, exactly. Uh, what did? What? What about you? What did? What did you like? All right. So first of all, I was a non-fruity fan. I mean, I, you, didn't, you didn't go for like the Fruit Loops, that kind of thing. No, I never liked the fruits. To this day, I don't like the fruity really? cereals. Not at all. Fruity Pebbles. Nope. It's I really little, wasn't a big fan of that one. It's a little, it's a little sweet, but I like it. Mm, mm. Yeah, I don't like the fruit thing. Okay. Captain Crunch. Oh, I liked yes. Captain Crunch, but it had to have the Crunch Berries. Yes, yes, because you got you got the kind of like. Um, the contrast. The, there the was Captain no Crunch. contrast. It all tastes the same, no. but it was just something about the color and seeing these little crunch berries in there. There's con- that there's square cereal and spherical there cereal. Are. And the square cereal can hold the milk a little bit better. It could. It was like they had the holes that would hold the milk nicely. That's true. If you left Oh man, they got so soggy if you left it alone. You left it in the milk and it was like it was like this, this glorious mush. <laughs> oh. Back to the Romans. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> right, right. The, the, the festival of Syracuse. Exactly, it's all back. So yeah, no, Captain Crunch, was, and it had to have the Crunch Berries. Funny story: mm-hmm. when I was in college, my wife uh, sent a letter to them asking them if they would make just Crunch Berry only cereal, and they wrote back saying, uh, "You know, we love your suggestion, but you know that doesn't seem to make any sense." <laughs> So just the berries. Right. Which, by the way, is currently in the store right now. Is that right? Yeah. She, sh- oh, she should sue. <laughs> she, they stole it, her idea. Oops, Only Berries is out there right now. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, your wife is a genius. Yeah, yeah. That actually sounds good. It, yeah. Booberry, I was seconding your booberry. You were. I'm a big blueberry fan, and much like Captain, like uh, Apple Jacks, it, it doesn't really what? taste like blueberry. Nothing but... like blueberry. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm saying that you know, in the Apple Jacks commercial, they're like, it's really good, but it doesn't quite taste like apples. Uh-huh. So this blueberry, you know, blueberry is really good, but it doesn't taste exactly like blueberry. But no. it's really good, and okay. I'm a big fan of the blueberry thing. All right, all right, fair enough. And then the best cereal of all time, mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. my opinion. Yes, they don't make anymore. It is called Graham Crackos from 1978. I, I am not falling for this. Every once in a while, you try, you try no, no. to trick me. It's legit. There's no Graham Crackos? Yes. It, so the, the cereal itself looked like um, it, was, it was long and had three circles in it. So it was kind of like um, if you got the Legos that were like long, yeah. you know how they have the little round circles on it? Sure. Like if you got one of the long ones. Like the thin, one by eights. Yeah. yeah. So it would be one by three. Okay. And but it was hollow and made of graham crackers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All they right. Were, so they were the best. They were the most addictive cereal I ever had. Oh, because they're called Crackos, Scott. <laughs> could be. Oh, they were just so good. They were my oh, favorite God. cereal. <laughs> and they don't make them anymore. I, I am going to have to Google graham yes. crackers. And if you happen to be working, somebody out there working for one of these cereal places, please ask them to bring back graham crackers. <laughs> I will be their biggest fan. <laughs> You're going to sell at least one box. <laughs> a day. A day. <laughs> a day. They were just so good. <laughs> all right. So, you know, all this talking yep. about all of these cereals, mm. right, made me think of something that we haven't talked about. And it's also made me have an idea of a game. Oh, a game. I love these games. That's right. So, do you remember getting prizes in all of your cereals? I mean, we talked about the ones for the, oh, you know, yeah. yeah, we talked about the cornflakes, but do you remember like all these cereals back then had prizes? I, I do. Rem- I, I remember. I, and sometimes the prizes on the box didn't exactly marry up with what you got <laughs> inside the box. That much is true. Right. So there was one I remember it was like one of those like hand clapper things. You remember like, like, like it was a plastic hand and you would, you would flip it back and forth really fast and it would clap for you. It was like yeah, a plastic yeah, clapper. Yeah, yep, right? yep. So there was, I, I forget what cereal it was, but they had this plastic clapper in there. I bought that cereal, begged my parents to buy the cereal, brought it home, ripped open the box, reached in, got the <laughs> clapper. It's the size of my pinky, Scott. <laughs> it's not a clapper. It's like this little plastic, like little flapper. <laughs> it was so sad. Yeah. All right. What do you have? Oh, well, I mean, for me, I, I'm not going to go crazy about which prize it was. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to say, in general, prizes were were a very big driving force for us picking the cereal in my family. Oh, yeah. It was all about the prizes. And it was not unusual to find, like, our boxes with uh, the cereal in the box without the liner. 
Oh, okay. Because what would end up happening is one of us, my brother or I, would be like, we want that prize. So we would take the liner out of the box, turn it upside down, and like dump, 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 dump into the box. Like you wouldn't notice it's not in a liner anymore. <laughs> But then the prize would be sitting on the top. We thought it was more hygienic than actually reaching our hands past all the cereal. It just touching every flake. Yeah. But if you did do the reaching thing, kids, if you're going to do the reaching thing, you got to eat a bowl or two. Otherwise, it overflows the box. Just there a little go. safety tip for me. <laughs> Not that I know. Uh, also, <laughs> sometimes I put the prize on the outside of the bag in between the cardboard and the bag. One, makes it easier. Two, tricks you. <laughs> tricks you. So I'm reaching in. I'm, I can't find the thing. So I pull the whole bag out of the box, and there's the prize. Yay, I got my prize. I pulled the, the prize bag back out. in. Bag does not go back in. It's impossible to get that bag back in. See the suggestion about the two bowls of cereal before you do this. <laughs> eat it. <laughs> Saves everything. You want to eat it anyway. You want to eat it anyway. Uh, you just eat the two bowls, <laughs> then go get the prize. That, that's the price of the prize. Yes. And in fact, that takes us to our game, mm-hmm. which I'm going to call yes. Prize Dive. Prize dive, I love it. Because it's like you're diving your hand to the bottom of that bag. Oh, it brings me back, brings me back. All right, so here's the deal. Mm -hmm. I'm going to name a prize that was given away by a cereal. Yes. You have to name the cereal. Okay, cereal, match it up to the prize that you tell me. I'm ready. Yeah, so I'm going to say the prize. You say the cereal. You can't see anything because I didn't write anything in the notes again. I have nothing. I am coming into this blind. Exactly. So here we go. Mm -hmm. All right, a terrarium. There's no a terrarium. Uh huh. A little tiny plastic you can terrarium. Fit a terrarium into it. Yes, you can. About the size of your clapper, but yes. Okay. Yes, you can. All right. So a terrarium. So it's going to be something, uh, something green and granola y. I am going to say honey bunches of oats. Alphabets. Alpha. Okay. Maybe. Alphabets, I could which is that. also a really good cereal. Yeah, because because Alphabets is like it's like a um, an educational cereal because it's got letters. It's it just as much as like the Alphabet Soup. Yes. So then you're Alphabet gonna, Soup for your breakfast. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it makes a lot of sense. Okay, yes. I, sh- I should have gotten that one. Go ahead. Okay, Next ready? One. Yep. All right, Jackson Five Record. It oh. was actually printed on the outside of the box. It was cardboard, but they were able to engrave the record sounds to the box. In the, in the cardboard? Yeah. So, like, they put a little layer of plastic on it, and they were able to engrave the, the music on that. So you'd, you'd cut the cardboard out, and that would become your record. Really? And then yeah. you would play the cardboard yeah. record? I actually remember doing that. I don't remember if it was for Jackson 5, but I remember doing that. Really? Yep. Yep. Do you know what the song was? I do. I don't. Um... If it was ABC, then it was probably going to be Alphabets again. I don't know. Okay. I am going to, I'm going to go with um, Golden Grams. Uh, Super Sugar Crisps. Oh, okay. Before they were super golden crisps. Well, it was Jackson 5. Yeah. So this is prior to 80s, okay. yeah, big so, time. Okay, so By the time we got to the 80s, it was more about Thriller. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Why don't they do that anymore? Why don't we have any like records, vinyl like, records? Like, cardboard, cardboard records? Yeah. We should talk to Google. Maybe that's the next April <gasps> Fool's joke. <gasps> It's Google Records. Excellent. Yeah, exactly. All right. Wait. Star Trek badges. Star Trek badges. We don't need any badges. Wrong uh, movie. <laughs> okay. I'm going to say... Come on. It's got to be something from back when Star Trek was huge. Yeah, so but remember, is, this is probably related is to 70s. Star Trek, the animated series. Oh, oh, that clears it up. <laughs> Did for me, you. I used to listen, watch okay. the animated series. I'm going to go Honeycomb. You were close. Mm-hmm. Super sugar, or, uh, the sugar smacks. Sugar smacks. Kellogg's <laughs> sugar smacks. Sugar smacks, like honeycomb, honey, honey smacks. Yep, okay. exactly. All right, all right. All right, so how about a digital watch? Oh, yes, a digital watch. There's no way there they could is. put a digital watch and make a profit in a box of cereal. The, apparently, well, I don't know if they made a profit. They knew they did, but I'm telling you, there was a digital watch. It was, it was a loss leader. It was um, inside with new hot colors. Okay, so <laughs> then this is going to be one of the higher end cereals. I'm gonna okay, s- I'm going to say Kashi Granola. Wow, you think it's more recent? <laughs> no, a digital watch. Okay, wait, let, I'm going to take that answer back. Okay. okay, and I am going to say um, Kellogg's. No po- pose. <laughs> no, you're not giving me. <laughs> no, anything. I'm not giving you anything. No, um, there's nothing. All right, I'm going to say Apple Jacks. No. Ah. No. Because this cereal is big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not small. No, no, no. 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 Do you remember the cereal? 
No, no, no. <laughs> honeycomb. I even said honeycomb. <laughs> oh, oh this, I stink at this game. What am I? O for four. All right, I'll give you. I'll give you an easy one. Yeah, give me, give, give me, give me a softball. Easy. All right, here we go. Here's here's the biggest softball I could throw to you. Okay. okay? Flint mobile. Oh, this is in Fruity Pebbles. Yes, it is. There you go. That is the <laughs> biggest softball I could throw to you. Thank the you. Flint mobile. I am the cereal master. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. How about a spy kit? Oh, a spy kit. Yeah, that's going to be in Cheerios. Nope. No, that's going to be in uh, cornflakes. Nope. I'll oh. tell you it's post, but you'll never guess the cereal. It's going to be in Golden Grams. Post? Oh, wait, no, that's General Mills. Post, 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 post. We already said Sugar Smacks. Yeah, no. I don't know. Pink Panther Flakes. <laughs> <laughs> you just said that with a straight face. I did. Pink Panther Flakes? Pink Panther Flakes. There has never in the history of the world been a Pink Panther Flake. There has. You're kidding me. Nope. Were they pink? Uh, duh. <laughs> They were pink and made of panthers. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And so what's the tie-in with the spy thing? I don't know. All right. Although they made it look like it, the actual spy kit mm-hmm. came in the pink panther shape. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So. I mean, you got the Inspector Clouseau thing. All right. So how about, I'll just give you a, like, how about two more? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's just- a mini action pinball game. A mini action pinball game inside of a bowl of cereal. This is certainly going to be inside of a bowl of Frankenberry. No. It was actually Super Sugar Crisps. Again. Again. They had really, if you go down the list, they had really good prizes. That was the place to be. Yeah, they you gotta, were. You got to buy the sugar crisps. They were. I'm going to take back the idea that I was going to only do two more. I'm going to do, or I'm going to do two more now. You're going to do two more now. I'm going to do two more now. So, so you, you lied to I me. I lied. I you exaggerated. Lied. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, all right. A whistle. A whistle? Yes. Okay, so um, if you're whistling... And in fact, it's a Harlem Globetrotter whistle. Oh, well, that, of course, would be in a box of Mr. T cereal. No, a good cereal, though. A um, good cereal. Yes. Um, I, I'm going to say that was inside of Fruit Loops. Lucky Charms. Lucky. Ah, you know what this is? This is you saying a prize. And me spouting out a random, <laughs> random cereal. cereal. Because right. there's no connection between any of these things. Well, there, that is the point. But I will say this last one, yeah. you should know. Because, and I almost forgot to bring it up. Because okay. this was like one of the biggest prizes I personally was looking for when I was growing up. And mm-hmm. I think you may have been too. It's entirely possible. All right. And I'll even give you a hint and say you've already named the cereal. Oh. So it's a repeat. It's a repeat. But the prize was like the king of all prizes, I think. Okay, go ahead. All right. In my opinion, when I was growing up. Yep. Lace and plate. Fruit Loops. What? I said that already. That was one of my guesses. Yes, but that Fruit Loops for the license plate? No. It's not small. No, no, no. 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 Honeycomb. Yes. I, that was the only reason why I ate the honeycombs was because I wanted my license plate you know for what? my bicycle. You know what? In my mind's eye, I can now see the box that had the license plate advertisement. Exactly. And it's honeycomb, and it was blue and white or blue and yellow. They came in different states. Oh, they did? They did, based on the state you were in. Now, at the time it came out, we were in New Jersey, Mm -hmm. which I think had the blue and the... That must be why I remember the blue. That That must be it. Yeah, that was was the license plate that came after the beige one. So they really, like, when they distributed the cereal, they kept track of what license plate was going man. I guess I wasn't part of the delivery team <laughs> I, was, I was on the consumption team I was and I wanted it on my bicycle yes because that was part of the advertisement you'd put it on your bike oh, and they, then they would ride it off it was the perfect size for a bike it was the perfect size for the bike it looked awesome on my stingray because yep. I had my Schwinn Stingray with the, with the with banana, banana seat. seat and oh, the, I remember it. Yes. And that, that thing that thing was a classic. And a ton. But yes. <laughs> yeah. So that's our game, Steve. Uh, I, the prize died. I wish I could say I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was but you know so what? hard. But we did talk also about some really awesome cereals that we had growing up. We did. And, and the prizes. Because... They really? drove us. The, they they drove me. I know that. The prize was more important than the cereal. Not, well, honestly, probably half of the cereals all tasted the same. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it 
didn't matter. It didn't matter. It was sugary grain of some sort. Let me eat it so I can get my license plate. Exactly. Thank you very much. It had a cool box and it had a record glued to the back and it had a license plate on the inside. I was all over it. I was going to be jamming to my tunes while I drive off on my bike. Exactly. Uh, so now those that I remember those cereals from the day, but what, what about today? What are the cereals like today, Scott? Well, they're very different, right? Mm. So... I thought maybe we could start looking at it from the point of statistics about st- you know breakfast cereals today. Okay. All right. So as of 2017, Americans ate on average about 160 bowls of cereal a year. Each American? Yes, each American. 160. 160. That's a serious amount of cereal. It is. And considering that I probably had two last year. <laughs> Somebody out there is getting 380 <laughs> just to balance it. Yeah. Wow. So there's somebody, somebody's doing a lot more eating than I am. I know some of them live in Pennsylvania and they're my nephews if they're listening because <laughs> they love their cinnamon toast crunch. Is that right? <laughs> oh yeah. Or as they call it, CT crunch. I see. That's what the cool kids say. I see. So um, in 2017, 2.7 billion boxes of cereal were sold. Billion. Billion. Man. And Kellogg's is the largest cereal company in the United States with its revenue hitting $8.3 billion in 2017. This is the same This is the same Kellogg from back in the 1800s that made that uh, granola. Probably not the same person. No, but, yes. but the, the whole company that came out of that. <laughs> yes, exactly. And what I find interesting when thinking about that, right? So I just told you $8.3 billion for Kellogg's in the U.S., mm-hmm. right? Do you know num- the United States is only ranked number four in cereal consumption? Number four? Number four. Out of the whole world? Really? Who's in front of us? All right. So uh, it's behind Australia and Canada. Yep. But number one is uh, Great Britain. Great Britain? Yep. Tiny Great Britain with giant cereal sales. Yes. Really? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. But unfortunately, these numbers have been dropping since 2017. Cereal sales have declined by 3.3%. Mm. I mean, it's still a $10 billion industry, right? But but I mean, it's on the decline, you know? And and part of that is because the eating habits are have been changing for the people these days. Like yeah. there's less time to sit down and eat. Mm-hmm. You're um, on the go. You're on the go. Breakfast is pretty much on the go. It's those breakfast bars, right? You can just grab like one of these little chocolate covered things and you eat them on their drive into work. Exactly. And so you'll find that cereal companies are now trying to market to these to these people that need to go everywhere with these breakfast cereal bars. They're coming up with other tricks for warm cereal bars and warm meals that are re- related to their thing. So mm. they're trying to come back, but it's going to be a hard slog. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, it's not great. Cereal it's going away. Yeah. But so anyway, do you have anything else about cereal, Steve? Oh, I think if I were to think back about cereal, I I have to tell the story of my aunt, my aunt Debbie. God rest her soul. She was amazing. And she she was a, a challenged individual, but she loved her cereal. Right. And she was probably seven or eight years older than me. And I would go over and visit, uh, you know, my grandma's house and Aunt Debbie would be living there. She would pour this bowl of cereal, and she had a way. She could pour the Apple Jacks or Honeycomb or whatever it was into a perfect kind of eight-inch tall pyramid that came out of this (laughs) bowl. And she would wrap her arm around the bowl in a protective kind (laughs) of stance. Kind of like she was going for the Heisman, huh? Yeah, well, well, just... (laughs) Just so that nobody at the table could even think about getting close to that bowl of cereal. Nice. And then she would pour that milk around the cereal in this kind of clockwise, counterclockwise like spiral spiral to just evenly distribute around this, this pyramid of cereal. And she would just munch on that for about an hour and 20 minutes until it wow. was down to the, to, to, to the empty milk at the bottom of the bowl. And as a... You know, I must have been like eight at the time. <laughs> you were just like, I want some. <laughs> I was in awe. I, I I had so much respect for that level of breakfasting. That's, That's awesome. Where, it was it was uh, it was one of my favorite memories of my aunt Debbie. And um, and uh, I just every once in a while when I have a bowl of cereal, pour out just a little bit more. Yeah. In her this honor. one's for you. This is for you, Aunt Debbie. There you go. Yeah. How about you? You got anything? 
Um, I do. And it's about two little words. Okay. What are these? Crunch and cup. Okay. Great. Alliteration yeah. again. Yes. But this time I want to put them together and mm. call them the crunch cup. Okay. Yes. This is a real thing. This is, um, so we're talking about Kickstarter, right? Okay. And there's a device in Kickstarter called the Crunch Cup, which is for people who like their cereal on the go. Mm. That's right. It's a special cup. And the way it works is uh, it's got two chambers. It's got an outside chamber that you fill up the milk. Okay. Then an inside chamber where you put in your favorite cereal. Okay. All right. Then you lock it in. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You put the lid on it and then you go. And then... By the man, you know, and then in fact, it's dishwasher safe. It fits in a standard cup holder of your car, so you can put it in your car or wherever else, right? Okay. And as they say, you pour it into your mouth, and the milk meets the cereal just in time inside your mouth, so that you could have your crunchy what? cereal to go. <laughs> Wait, I'm trying to I'm trying to comprehend this. <laughs> yes, this is this is like a, like it's a, a real thing. This is like a like a to go coffee mug. Yes. Except that it's got two chambers. It's got an inside and an outside chamber, and and, it, and it's all designed so that you can take a swig of coffee, or not coffee, of cereal. cereal, and keep it of milk, so that your cereal doesn't ever get soggy. Right? It keeps it keeps the crunchy side in the inside chamber. It keeps the milk on the outside chamber, really? and and the magical moment of it entering into your mouth, it marries the two in a crunchy, milky goodness. <laughs> as crazy as this sounds, and actually, I'm not advertising for them. I am not advertising. I have nothing to do with this. I just found this on Kickstarter. Went, it's crazy. That is. It sounds like whoever came up with the McDLT <laughs> keep the hot up. side hot and keep the cold side cold. That's right. It's, it's the same thing. You've got different <laughs> compartments. Just you this do. has a burger and this has lettuce. lettuce. Now you've got cereal. I think and the cereal milk. milk one is much better. And at this very moment, I'm telling you, my nephews with the cinnamon toast crunch, mm -hmm. they are now running up the stairs to my brother-in-law saying, we need at least 10 of these. <laughs> the crunch cup. All right. I'm going to go the take a look. The crunch cup. It is just so cool. And Maybe. the funny part is I read on, on Kickstarter. Yeah. I don't think you can order in Kickstarter anymore, actually. Oh, it already um, closed? I think they closed it, but that's because estimated delivery is April 2019. That's that's now. That's like right now. I know. Oh. I know. So if you're just now thinking to yourself, I'm jonesing for a crunch cup, Ooh, your time is almost here. Yeah, oh, it's going to be amazing. This is going to be the next phase of the history of series. I wonder what else you could use that for. Crunch cup? Yeah, something that you want to keep not from getting soggy, but you want to marry it in your mouth. Uh, say like a salad and dressing. Yeah, I guess that would work. But I would not eat, want to eat that while I'm <laughs> in my commute that doesn't... going down the, the throughway. Uh, and and uh, not granola. What's the one? Granula. Granula. <laughs> Except you have to be on a cross-country trip. <laughs> <laughs> to let the milk it can. just in time soak <laughs> in your mouth. So you have to, you have to hold the cup <laughs> upwards. No, it's more, your like a, more like you'd have to pour it in your mouth and just keep it there. <laughs> just, just, just let it <laughs> just let it start to disintegrate. Before it breaks a crown. Yeah. <laughs> I got another 300 miles before I can take a bite. All right. You got anything else? Uh, no, no. I'm all tapped out. Now, this is this is fun. We went through a lot of information about cereals, and uh, you put me to shame in this game. <laughs> yep. All right? I, I should have never agreed to this <laughs> sight unseen game, but you know. uh, that's the way things go. Well, I guess that's how I used to know sugary breakfast cereals. We hope you like this podcast that I used to know. By now, I'm sure you know the routine, mm -hmm. right? We're in iTunes and TuneIn and iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Spotify, everywhere you can get your podcast fix. All the major places. And as a reminder, don't forget how important ratings are in helping other people find our podcast. So important. Oh, yes. It's huge. And if you could do us a big favor by going to your favorite pod player and giving us a rating, we would be forever in your debt. Mm -hmm. At least really, really thankful. Also, do you have a suggestion, something that you used to know that you wish you knew more about or love wanted to get the word out? to hear about those things. We love to hear about the suggestions. Hey, why don't you give us a suggestion over on our Facebook at I Used to Know or Twitter at I Used to Know Pod or our Instagram, right? I Used to Know underscore Scott is my Instagram. You could hit us with your suggestions. We would love to hear from you. Thanks, as always, to the amazing Stevie Jump for our theme song. Stevie Jump. Yep. And again, thanks for listening. Threes and eights, everybody. And we'll talk to you soon. Right. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>